Can you hear me now? <laughs> How's everybody doing? Good. I'm so I'm so glad to see you all out tonight. I really appreciate you coming. Um, as Maya has told you some things about me, my name is Priscilla Flint Banks, and I am the co-founder of the Black Economic Justice Institute. My husband, Brother Lowe, who's gonna help me with the my um, PowerPoint presentation. Um, He's, he's going to assist me. He assists me as well. So um, first of all, I'd like to, again, thank everybody for coming. Um, I hope the food is good. Um, so I'm just going to show you a copy of my book. This is it. You can get it on Amazon. I look back and wonder how I got over. It talks about my trials and my tribulations and how God brought me through them. Um, um, I'll just give you just a little bit about it. Um, I had two children. Um, my first son died in the fire at four, and my second son died in the car accident at seven. So I had a lot of ups and downs, was, went through a lot of mental health issues and problems, but thanks be to God, I can stand here today and be thankful and grateful for everything that he's done in my life. And I'm truly thankful for my husband and my partner because he keeps me grounded. <laughs> Um, even though he drives me crazy sometimes, but <laughs> he's a jack all trades, master of some. So um, I want to talk to you about um, first about how um, BG got started. So the black economic, we were, um, we, um, my husband worked with Chuck Turner and Aku Jackson, who was Tito Jackson's father. And they had an organization called the Greater Roxbury Workers Association. And so um, when I met my husband, we were, um, I'm also a founder member of Mothers for Justice and Equality and the Leadership Forum. And I, um, so we were, um, we actually um, were protesting the, the Bruce Boland building, the, the Ferdinand building. They, um, we were monitoring that project for compliance of the Boston Resident Job Policy. And they um, were out of compliance. The, the, res the, the policy says that there should be 50% people of color, 25, I mean, 50% Boston residents, 25% people of color, and 10% females. And that was not happening. So we decided to protest. And um, we were out there every morning at 6 a.m. We had um, clergy come out with us. We had other elected officials. We had... Um, community resident and businesses and they were out there with us and we also had touch 106.1 FM and we were out there every morning talking and protesting around what was going on with the non-compliance and while we were out there we met a gentleman by the name of Aaron Tanaka who invited us to come and be part of the Boston Jobs Coalition after we joined the Boston Jobs Coalition we protested at 225 Center Street we went to the airport we protested at um, Ink Block, um, Millennium Towers. So we were just folks that were able to organize people and have them come out to um, protest with us. And then we, um, I think in 2014, um, Chuck Turner came back to Boston and we protested the Tropical Foods Project because Tropical Foods in Madison Park promised to pay their workers $50 an hour to build it. By us monitoring the project, we were told that they were only paying workers $11. So we started organizing. First, we protested a few days at Tropical Foods, about a month maybe. And actually, we started protesting the week before we got married. Who does that, right? <laughs> and so we were out there every day. And um, finally, we decided to move to Dudley Station, where there was a lot of people. Um, where we had a captive audience. And so we were able to organize and get people to start coming to the Roxbury Oversight Committee meetings because that's where um, developers came and, and, and presented what they wanted for the community. And so then we came up, when we realized that these, our workers were only being paid 50, $11, then we came up with, uh, it's called the Good Job Standards, which we're still currently working on trying to get um, the city of Boston to, to permanently adopt it. And um, so we continued to do this work. Um, we were able to get a new ordinance passed last year. So instead of the, um, the ordinance being um, 
it was fit, so now it's 51 percent Boston residents, 40 percent people of color, and 12 percent females. So that was our protest at Tropical Food the first day. You see, I'm not really looking at that right, but um, <laughs> that's some of the this this slide is because of some of the work that we've done. You know, we 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 see a lot of work, construction work going on in our community, but a lot of people don't look like us. A lot of the people are not Boston residents, and there's not a lot of females on these projects. And so we feel like, because Boston is made up of 54% people of color, then we should be included in this work. And so we, um, yeah, we, we Um, and so, um, so in two and so for we, so we, so we're, we're still working on the good job standard. That's taking a little bit more time to do. Um, we also, we sit on the access and opportunity committee for the, um, the gaming commission, which has the, a project, um, MGM in Springfield. And of course, everybody knows about the wind project in Everett. So we have been working with Suffolk Construction, um, the Casino Action Network, and other groups to try to make sure that our people have jobs on, on this on this site as well. And so um, it's, it's difficult because the unions are not inclusive of people of color and females, but some of them are coming around. Like we have good relationships with the carpenters, um, the laborers, the painters, and the electricians. But a lot of the other um, unions, it's just so difficult to get them to the table. And when our mayor, Mr. Marty Walsh himself, ran for office, he promised to bring those unions to the table. And that has not happened. So um, we're also talking to the, um, the governor's people around the project labor agreement. The project labor agreement is an agreement that says that all these jobs that are given out should be, um, they should be union jobs. And so our question is, well, if they should be union jobs and we're not getting into the unions, how do we get those jobs? And what we found out is that the um, Baker administration does not, has not did a project labor agreement. So now we have to go back to the drawing board and figure out another way to get um, our people on these jobs. So while we were doing that, and also we're very involved in civic engagement, um, I just want to say, do a shout out to one of our young leaders, Mr. Jamai, who works with us. Um, and he's a he's an honor student. He's graduating from college this year, and, and I mean not this year. He's graduating from high school this year, and he's going on to college. And he's a well-mannered young man. And so we have every summer we bring young folks like him into our organization to help them around civic engagement and um, civic education, voter registration, and voter mobilization. So we're very happy that a lot of our people have taken to the streets. Unfortunately, it's been because of people dying, but we're very excited because hopefully these young folks that are marching will go and get their self-registered to vote so they can really have a say. So we're, we're, we're proud of Jemai. And so, so let me just tell you a story about this picture right here. So you see this dust? You see that dust? That is cement that they're digging in the ground, and that dust is flying all over the place. When we saw it, we thought it was a fire. It was so much. And so we, when we got around to Dudley Station, um, my husband said, you're supposed to have water on that. You're supposed to have water on that. So he gets out the car. He goes around the corner. So I'm sitting, and I'm waiting, I'm waiting. And then I said, oh, you know what? He's been around there too long. So I get, I get out the car and I go around the corner and he's literally arguing with a police officer. The police officer wants to arrest him. He's like, well, you are the ones that need to be arrested because you all are out of compliance because all this dust is going up in the air and people are sick. And so they, we, we literally had to call OSHA because that is definitely a violation and a lot of people don't know that. So if you don't know, you would just go by and think that the place is smoking up. But it's literally, it's, that's why a lot of our people have asthma and illnesses like that, because things that, that construction people do, that they're not in compliance. And Feeney Brothers is another organization that they do not hire people of color. You might find one on, in 10 jobs. And so we, um, 
we had no problem reporting them. And um, so this is just the stuff that, that, that we did and that we do. And then when we, as, we would, as we're doing this type of work, we, we knew that we were being gentrified out. And we kept telling people that gentrification was coming and that we, have to, we were going to lose you know, our homes or, or apartments and things like that. And we was like, well, what can we do about it? And at the time, we were, um, we were located at the Grove Hall in D.C. on Blue Hill Ave. So we said, well, why don't we try to start a group um, that will have say when the developers come into our community. And so that's what we did. We, um, we applied for a planning grant with Third Sector New England. And it was to bring cohesiveness around the Blue Hill Corridor and give our community a voice and what type of development was being done in our community and who was doing the development and also how could we help the businesses. So we received the implementation grant back in February of 2016. And we started working um, with the community and with the businesses. And what we found was that, so we created the survey and we asked businesses, well, um, what, what assistance do you need? And they told us that they needed like financial assistance like marketing, they needed like employment development. We asked them, um, were they interested in becoming part of the commission? And you're still on that slide. <laughs> That's okay. Um, and so, we, so they, we found out that some of them were interested in doing voter registration so that we could take our voter registration um, to their businesses and they would um, you know, tell their customers about them. We found out that some of them were afraid of gentrification and um, leases and, and being pushed out the community. And so um, we, we all, after, so after the year was up with that grant, we applied for the implementation grant. And we received that. And it's because Third Sector liked the work that we were doing. And we do, the, I mean, we, we do a lot of different things. I don't know how, grace of God. Um, we also have a radio broadcast in this building downstairs, this um, Boston Praise Radio and TV. Um, we have a radio program every Thursday from 8 to, ni to 10. Uh, 8 to 9, we're on the FM side, 102.9 FM, so you can listen. And then from 9 to 10, we go um, onto the internet and um, local TV, Apple TV. There's, we have like 30 different platforms that people listen to us. And we're, we basically talk about our community, the things that, go to, that are going on in our community, and how we can help to make changes, because we can make change. We, we, we have done that um, by getting a new ordinance passed. We didn't think we would be able to do that. It took us five years, because the city of Boston is slow. But um, there's uh, other things that are happening, like um, the Jim Brooks Stabilization Act, um, you know, the, cr um, the criminal justice reform. So as we know that as a community, if we come together, we really can get things done. And so we, um, for the Blue Hill Corridor, we, um, for the Blue Hill Corridor, this is, um, he's still showing you slides from, from um, Bee Gees work. And actually, um, Bill Linehan, who he just had to pitch up, who used to be a city councilor, we um, wanted him to do a hearing around the BRJ p policy. And we literally went to him and told him that we didn't want him to do a hearing at 12 o'clock in the afternoon when nobody could come out. We said, we want you to do a meeting, we want you to do it in our community. And so we actually, um, he actually did it at, at, the, at the kick clock um, senior home on Dorchester Ave. So that shows the power if you come together, that you can make things happen, you know. They say that the city council, they only um, are responsible for the budget, but they're not just responsible for the voting the budget. They're responsible for advocating for us, for our needs. We as a community, we have to let them know what we want and what we need. And so we've been fortunate enough to be able to have three of our city councilors at large be part of our planning commission, and that is Ayanna Presley, Michelle Wu, and Anisi Sabi George. We're now reaching out to and Andrea Campbell and Kim Janey because Roxbury, Dorchester, and Mattapan are also their areas. And we want to have a say in what happens in our community. We feel like we deserve, we pay taxes, we vote, and even if we don't vote, we still pay taxes. And we pay their salary and they have, 
they have to realize that they work for us, we don't work for them. And so the only way that we can do that is by organizing and bringing people together and, and making changes. And so, oh, we all know who that is, right? <laughs> That's our friend, the mayor. <laughs> and so, I don't know what that meant, but, <laughs> um, and so we, um, so in January of this year, we actually had our swearing in of the Blue Hill Corridor, and we did it at the Freedom House. And it, it was a very nice event, and we were glad that, you know, our city councils, they came, and we had about, maybe about 25 people were sworn in as the commission. And another thing, uh, the people that are on the commission, they come out faithfully. We have our meeting the first Wednesday of every month, and they come out faithfully to these meetings. And so now we, we, ha we have broken out into groups. Um, we have an outreach um, research committee, and then we also have a governance committee. And so we're, we're really working hard. We're still um, completing the surveys, but we're getting good feedback from the people who, who are, are interested. And um, some of the work that we did along the corridor, we, um, we stopped the liquor store from being brought into um, Grove Hall area. They wanted to bring a liquor store. We was like, there's enough liquor stores here. And they tried to fool us by changing the date and so we found out the new, the, the new date, and we organized people, and we all went down to City Hall, and everybody testified and testified and testified. And when it came to us, they said, well, who in this room disagrees with that? And everybody in the room stood up. And so that, that killed that liquor store right there. And we also, we helped a, uh, a man by the name of Frank Thomas obtain um, the zoning permit to open up his laundromat. We had to build his laundromat. We didn't know him. Somebody, one of our, our members brought him into our meeting, and he said how he had been trying to get something built on this property for like 25 years. And we're like, that don't even make sense. And so what we did, so he asked us if we would come and testify for him or write a letter of support, and that's what we did. He was able, and now the laundromat is literally built on the corner of Otis Field and Blue Hill Ave. So that was another p uh, way of showing power in our community when we come together. We also um, helped shut down Stop and Shop because they had rodent problems. And so we, um, came, we went to a, a community meeting and the inspector from um, Inspectional Services came. They had warned them and they came. I mean, you, if you heard the stories that the people said happened in that store, I mean, they picked up their bread and their bread moved. They took their bread home and the bread, you know, there was, I, I know you all are eating stuff, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I'm just, you know, I, I apologize for being so graphic. But I mean, and why does that, things like that happen in our community? Um, what I was a little bit disappointed in was some of the people testified and said, oh, I went in that store five years ago and I never went back. Well, why don't you tell somebody, you know? Um, but however, they did get it cleaned up. They were, they did go under new management. And so um, they promised, you know, scholarships for, for the young people, and they promised that they would change management, and which is what they did. So those were some of the things that the, the Blue Hill Corridor Commission was able to do. We moved from our location um, at the Grove Hall in D.C., and we moved to Columbia Road, 61 Columbia Road, where the um, Mass Association of Minority Law Enforcement Officers um, office is and also you can listen to them every Saturday on 102.9 FM they are the uh, minority uh, um, mass association minority for law enforcement offices and so um, we moved there and we were able to do some things that we had wanted to do like hold the Ujama mod um, Ujama means co um, cooperative economics and so we so we um, every every Saturday for the month of February, not this past February, last year February, we had vendors come in and um, they sold their wares. And of course, you know, February is a bad month, but we were able to get close to like um, 50 vendors coming in there and, and they serviced about 300 people. And so another example of that is the black market down at Dudley Station. So um, we also, we did first time home buying classes um, I work for Mass Affordable Housing Alliance, and they do first-time home buying. They do counseling. They help you with foreclosures. They help you with your businesses, and and that was also done at. Um, you smiling? You know somebody in that picture? 
Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, and so we're going we're planning on doing another um, home buying class because we know that people, in order, unfortunately, in order to really stay in Boston, you you are gonna have to own something, um, because if you rent, you know your landlord can increase your rent or don't renew your lease. And so we, what we advocate for is we tell people to partner with your brother or your sister or your cousin or a good friend and try to buy some of these two or three family homes. What's happening is that a lot of them are being condonized, you know, because people just don't want to deal with tenants anymore. But where does the family go? So the family gets gentrified out. That families that had lived here all their life. So, and um, that's our second annual grant writing class. So we, um, one of the ladies that work with us on the Blue Hill Corridor, she um, is a grant writer. And so we held two grant writing classes. Um, and we're hopefully going to be having another one. Because we need to know how to write grants. We need to know how to write grants that will get us funding. And, um, and so these are some of the spots on Blue Hill Ave that we looked at. And we wanted to say, what do we want here? So these are just a couple of the slides that we did um, that show some of the properties that are up. And so some of these ne next steps we've done, um, and we're still like working things out. So we're still um, we're still looking for businesses. We're still looking for people. On May fifth, we're going to have a. Um, a neighborhood and business assembly at 31 Airy Street, where the, we're in partnership with the Ujima Project. I know some of you all are, are know about the Ujima Project. We are actually um, founder members of the Ujima Project. When we first started meeting together, um, DG was was there. So we, you know, they they like the work that we do, and we like the work that they do. We feel like there should be another way for us to be able to look at our economics as it relates to cooperative um, businesses and bothering or time uh, banking, things like that that can really help us because we know the system is not a fair system. And so we, um, and so those are all our current part partners and sponsors. And um, so I just, um, is that the end of it? Okay, so that's the end of the slides. And so, um, I'd just like to know, open it up, if you all have any questions for me, um, if there's something else you want, you would like to know, um, feel free. Don't all speak at once. Oh, okay, hi. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, we um, we have some people that are on our commission that are talking to the BBTA, which is the old BRA. And, and D and D to see exactly what they plan on doing with some of those lots because you go what happens is if we're not involved then something goes up and we we have no way of knowing about it and even if the developers come in there's, there's no guarantee in saying that we're going to be able to stop we know we can't stop gentrification we can't stop these developers from coming in offering their money um, to the city to build these things but we can have a say. You know, Chuck Turner has a 
um, one third, one third, one third, which is one third um, low and moderate, one third moderate, and one third market, which which works. However, a lot of people um, do not like that model because of greed, you know. But um, the, we right now we're still investigating to see if anybody has those lots yet, and if they're not, see how people can be brought together. You know, they form LLCs and nonprofits and things like that. So I always say where there's a will, there's a way. So you should come to some of our meetings. Exactly. Exactly. That's true. Fall River. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Right, and that and that's true, and that's why we try to organize around our community to get them involved because. If we, I, I'm, a, I'm a strong component. If you go down the city hall and there's enough of you, they're going to listen to you, you know? And that's why we need to be at these hearings that they have on every Wednesday because we know every Wednesday they are there. And that's when they decide what committee is going to take up what. But we can, you know, we, we th this is one of the reasons for the Blue Hill Corridor because we want to get the businesses involved as well as the residents. And it's a four and a half mile stretch. But just imagine if half of the businesses on Blue Hill have joined with us, you know, and half of the residents, because they have a lot of um, apartment buildings also. They also have a lot of vacant land. So, and what about all these houses that have been foreclosed on? Who gets to purchase them? And Because we know these banks don't want them properties, so maybe there's some kind of way we can look at coming up with, we have talked about doing the land trust, where we can maybe purchase some of these old properties and renovate them so that people can live in them. What about our returning citizens, those that are coming back from being incarcerated? Where are they going to live? If you know if they don't have a place to live, they're not going to be able to get a job. You know, they need health care. They need, um, you know, um, some of them need food stamps. You know, different things that they need to get back on their feet. They don't need to be couch surfing because if you're couch surfing, you can't keep a job, you know, because you don't know where you're going to be at from one day to the other. Um, so th that's what we try to, you know, but that's how we're trying to organize people, Joe, so that they can, we, so that we can have a say. And I think if we put up, we have proved that if we put up enough fuss and do a, a lot of work that we can make change in our community. So um, another one of our young brothers just came in, Damien. He was with BG from the beginning. So we do have some young folks involved. Of course, we got Miss Callie there. I'm sorry. Question. Well, we're not working on anything with them specifically, um, but we're at, we advocate for all our community. So um, actually, um, Pastor Hobbs, who is a minister here, he actually has a program, um, it's called Healing Our Land, where he goes into the prisons and he registers people to vote. And he's, he's the chaplain over there and he talks to them. And so when they come out, they come to this church and we try to assist them with getting certain services. Um, the Black Economic Justice Institute, we're starting to bring find and bring workers to the table to see exactly what they need. Because like I said, not only is there, do they need a job, but they need housing and they need other things, you know, other things. So we haven't really like kind of like centered on returning citizens, but if people come to us and ask us, we would do everything in our power to help them. 
Yes. Well, we're, we're talking to One United Bank, and they are already involved in the DSNI land trust. And um, so we, we have partnerships with them. They are actually, um, they, they support our radio broadcasts, and we also do work for them um, as their CRA consultants. And so we are talking to them about, they just signed on with the Mass Affordable Housing Alliance with their one mortgage program. So that's a step in the, good, in, in the right direction. And so um, they'll, they'll, I'm sure they'll be doing other things like businesses and stuff, but they just want to make sure, you know, that they get their, you know, one program set up so that it's it's working right. So, and we and and the, and, and the reason why we haven't really reached out to anyone around the land trust because we're still trying to figure it out. We're talking to people like at DSNI and Gen Gen Geneva Quincy to find out exactly what the process is. We're doing our research now to find out how we can come up with a land trust. And as soon as we have a good foundation to go on and have some money. Um, we will definitely push forward with that initiative. More questions? Well, there's a lot of homeless people because landlords um, are, are pushing people out. People don't have nowhere to stay. The rents are going up so much that people can't afford to, to stay there. We have even um, thought about maybe, you know, there's, a, there's abandoned properties. Maybe those abandoned properties, people can come in and rehab them. Like, um, what is it? Hum Habitat, Habitat for Humanity, that type of, of um, model. And then people can use their sweat equity to help renovate or build. Because there's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of empty buildings around, and so why do they, they just sit there, you know? Why can't people um, come up with a plan to um, re redo those and have people who um, are homeless come to them? Hey Amen. I was homeless, too. I was homeless for 10 months. I lived in a shelter. So I know exactly what you're feeling. And the reason why I was homeless, because I lost my job, you know. And so these things happen, you know. People lose their jobs. and uh, You know, an another um, sad story ab uh, um, about incarceration is that um, a lot of times when people are incarcerated and their parents own homes and then their parents pass away and they get out of prison, and if they don't have no jobs and they can't pay for the taxes or they can't pay for the upkeep and they lose property that way too. And we, can't, we will never forget about redlining in, in, in the early um, 90s. That's, um, that's why Maha was on form. And they have literally put over 20,000 people in homes because of their home buying class, because of their advocacy work. So um, that's, a, that's another example of people coming together writing a program it was called the soft second and now it's called the one mortgage and so there's about 37 banks that that offer that so we need to fit, come up with a way to to pool our resources because that's what we need you know we need financial resources to be able to do what we need to do which is to come together with our money and see how we can create our own economic system because the one that we're in now doesn't help More questions? Hi, Brandon. Welcome. Here's a, um, this young man here. He's part of the Blue Hill Carter, and he um, is a nutritionist. <laughs> yeah, they just opened up their space in, New, in, in Grove Hall. The name of his company is Include, right? Yes, and actually they're going to the ones that's going to be developing our website for the Blue Hill Planning Commission. So we're excited about that. So, time for me to move. <laughs> um, I, you know, I really appreciate you all coming out, taking the time to come out and listen to me, because some of you all don't know me. Some of you do, but some of you don't. So 
I really appreciate it. Um, and so do we have, uh, go ahead, Brandon. The type of work we do. Um, funding sources you talking about or just I mean we have a website our website is BEJII.org but you will find out a lot of the work that we've done but are you talking about how do we get funding for the, some of the work that we're doing or oh. well I mean like I, I was telling these these people we do have a radio broadcast every Thursday, and we do try to get as much information as we can to the to the community. And so, um, yeah, something. Can you think of something, Mike? Yes. Okay, so I can give you an example. So, um, just as an example, when we finished protesting at um, the Ferdinand Building, we, we moved to 225 Center Street, which is right in front of Jackson Square. So you know that building right there where Knacker's located? With the, we protested there from October 2012 to March of 2013. And we were out there every single morning, snow, sleet, whatever, at 6 a.m. We'd have prayer at 6 a.m. And then we would stand on the island and protest. And they laughed at us. But we brought a lot of the business agents to the table. We brought community builders to the table who were the, um, who was building that building. And Bob Mitchell said to us, well, we want to help you. So he brought in Marty Walsh, who was the, the rep before he became the mayor, and a lot of the business agents um, to talk to us. When the building was completed, we went back to Bot and said, you said you want to help us. What are you going to do for us? They actually paid our rent at our first bi business for two years. So now they are building on Geneva. Is it Geneva? No. Quincy and um, Blue Hill Ave. And they reached out to us when they found out about us doing, being part of the Blue Hill Corridor. They knew that they made mistakes in that first building, and they wanted want to partner with us so that's why we're talking to them now to see if they will um, if they will um, try to help us with some of their retail space by creating maybe a small Ujama mat, a smaller version and also we have relationships with Cameron Zahedi who is building the Molina Hotel and the Molina residence so we, we, we have people that we can reach out to and talk to and, and, and that's, what we're, that's what we're doing. You know, we do know, I mean, we monitor um, three projects. We monitor Bartlett Yard, which is being built now. We, um, we monitor the, the hotel and, and the residence. So 
we, and, and this is a community thing. We as the Boston Jobs Coalition, this is what we do. We monitor we, every other Friday. We're at these meetings from 9 to 11, seeing who have they hired. If they don't have people of color, we try to bring people to ha to, for them to hire. And so um, that's how we build relationships with, with different people. The monitoring committee meetings. We've been doing it for five years. We were invited, we were appointed, my husband and I were appointed by the Roxbury Strategic Master Plan Oversight Committee to monitor these projects. And then, um, so, the bar, so there was a, 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 a group, Dorchester, what is it, what's Janice's group? Roxbury Dorchester Labor Committee. And they, they actually started with the Croc Center. So they had already been monitoring it. And, and so we just, you know, the, because we were interested and they knew that we were interested, um, they appointed us to, to do that and we just, nev we just didn't stop. It's like, okay, we're here now, we're not going nowhere. You know, so we hold them accountable. You know, we, we kicked up a lot of fuss in Dudley when Tropical Food and, and Madison Park put in their RFP that they were gonna pay people for $50 an hour. We have a relationship with Madison Park. That's where we get most of our, our youth for, from, from the summer. Because we're just, we're honest. We, you know, we don't know no other way to be. So unfortunately, if you don't like us, then you just don't like us. But if you do like us, you like us, so. responsible for making that oversight committee go from a group of 20 people to over 200 and something people at every meeting and Damien can attest to that because he would he was one of the ones that was helping us organize people so we we, we know how to get what we want it's just sometimes it's you know you just got to I guess we have strategic plans and you know but a lot of a lot of the, the developers and, and people they know us they know BG Brandon We can do anything we want to do. <laughs> we, well, yeah, it sounds like a good idea. I mean, we, you know, we're open because we're still new at this. We've only been around for like five years, you know, and so there's a lot of things. We learn things every day, you know. We're learning how to, to work smarter, you know, and, and, and not have to be at all these meetings. You know, we're, we, we signed up with Zoom, and so now we can have up to 100 people on one meeting without leaving our house and things like that, you know. So, so we're learning ways, you know. Um, I used to think Facebook was a good way to organize, and now I'm not so sure because of the 50 million folks' names that they got. Mine may be one of them, don't even know. So, um, you know, we, we have to think of other ways that we can get in our folks involved, so. I know. We know, we know, we know that we're being monitored and all this other good stuff. We we ain't we ain't sleep. <laughs> Right. Right.
Any more questions? Comments? Joe? Right, and, and right, and I think that we should get community benefits because we are the community, and we should we should benefit from all this development that is going on in our community. So um, we have we we talk about that. We meet with um, Carolyn Crocker, John Barrows, the mayor, as we talk about benefit. You know, what is a community benefit? You know, some of the things that they say are community benefits are community benefits. You know, so we have to define what a community benefit is. You know. And um, th those are some of the things that, you know, we're, we're still working on. It's a long process, and we don't have a lot of bodies, and that's why we invite you to join BG, join the Blue Hill Corridor Planning Commission, you know, by any means necessary, because we can make change. We, we definitely can make change, you know, and it's going to take all of us working together. And so... Any more questions? No? Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate everybody that's here. And hopefully, you know, you'll get involved with the Black Economic Justice Institute and the Blue Hill Carter Planning Commission. I just want to thank everyone again for coming, and thank you to everyone um, who came a bit late and was able to um, hear um, some of Priscilla's words tonight. Um, I want to encourage you guys to, as she said, um, find ways to be involved with the work that um, Beji is doing, um, and I also encourage you to, um, you know, stay engaged. You know, it's great to check out their website, but it's even better to find sustained ways to be involved with grassroots organizations and grassroots work that really needs to be done to make sustained changes in these communities. Um, so um, I want to thank everyone for coming out tonight, and I also want to um, make note that this is not the last event in our series. Um, our next one coming up is on April 10th with um, Kevin Lamb. He's the organizing director at um, Asian American Resource Workshop. Um, so you can um, come to um, the nonprofit center at 89 South Street near South Station and um, hear Kevin speak um, on the evening of April 10th, that's a Tuesday at 6 p.m. Um, and if you want to get more information about that, you can definitely ask me or um, one of my lovely co-organizers over there. And um, please, please, please take some information about Beji before you go. Um, thank you all for coming, and please respect the space and don't leave any trash behind you. Thank you. <laughs>